The last time we seen Tabitha, she shattered through a lighthouse window and now she's on the outside world. Kenny's life is about to shatter as he loses a loved one and hopefully you guys are about to shatter that like button because we have returned with season 3 of From. Welcome back guys to Fog Entertainment. We've waited a while but finally the wait is over. Season 3 of From is here. We are here to review episode 1. It's called Shatter and for me this is a very important season for From because the first season was great. Season 2 started off okay, quickly went downhill. Season 3 in my opinion needs to deliver or it very well could be the final season. It's make or break for From. It is from the executive producers of Lost. I feel like last season it got lost. It needs to find itself. Tabitha needs to find them. Someone needs to find them. Whether it be the new introduction of Victor's dad who doesn't really look like his dad, looks like more like his son. Someone needs to find them. They need to find their glory days. I've seen season one, I thought this could be the show, you know, that, that rivals the, the great horror shows out there. But season two, man, the drop off was like a cliff. It was like an RV going off a cliff, man. It needs to find its heyday. Yeah, because like, I mean, let's be honest. In terms of TV series and the horror genre, I don't think the bar is extremely high. No. I don't think... It would. I don't, it's not unbelievable that From in the opening season could have became the best horror TV series of all time. No. Because I, I, I don't believe that the bar is that high. Walking Dead started off great, quickly went downhill. I really did enjoy the strain in season one. I think that went, also went downhill as well. When you look at horror, first of all, there's not that many horror TV series. And there's especially not that many good ones. So From, and I think it still could become the best. Season 2 wasn't god awful. Let, let's just get that out there. Season 2, it wasn't awful. But it, it was a big downgrade on Season 1. But they can recover. There's, there's definitely some stories going on. There's some elements that I think they should be able to use to promote Season 3 to a higher level than Season 2. Whether they can do that or not. That remains to be seen. But we start the episode with Tabitha. She wakes up in Camden, Maine. She's in a hospital. The nurses are attending to her. They tell her that she was found by some hikers. Obviously, she remembers that she used to be in that crazy little town with her family. And now she's not there. So panic sets in. Now, the police are being called. And I, I guess she doesn't want to be there for the police because she makes an escape. She sneaks out of the hospital. Is that the right thing to do? I mean, should she be reporting to the police what happened? Or would the police think she's crazy? Would the police possibly blame her for the murder of her family? I'm assuming since the whole family's been reported missing. Possibly. So she manages to escape the facility. Probably the right move. I mean, let's just cover the whole Tabitha stuff, I think, right now. So we see her go through the episode. She's, like, walking around the town. She's still trying to get familiar, I guess, with outside world. Almost gets ran over. Um, approaches a couple of kids and asks them to borrow their phone. One of them seemed really, you know, just shady. He was like, oh, you can't give her the phone. You can't give her the phone. I think trying to create some unnecessary drama there. She phones her mother, has a conversation with her mother, doesn't tell her mother anything. Basically just says, oh, look, we're okay. It took us some time. I promise I'll call you back. Her mother doesn't want her to go. And I was kind of hoping that maybe Tabitha would ask more questions or ask at least like what happened I mean have have we been reported missing was it on the news have people been looking for us I, I was kind of hoping that we'd shed more light on that but she basically just phones her mother to let her know that she's alive and that she will get back in contact soon but it's going to take a while she then goes and, and visits her father and doesn't really say much to be honest doesn't confess anything that's really happened and the father brings up the lunchbox and she looks inside at the contents to see what was for lunch because the father suggested, what did you have for lunch? What did Victor make you? And then at the bottom of the lunchbox, she sees an address. And it is Victor's address. So obviously she goes to Victor's house. We see some old guy uh, parking up. He's got some beers. He tells Tabitha he's not interested. Must have thought she was some like sort of marketing campaigner or whatever. But then he notices the lunchbox. This guy did seem aggressive, so I'm assuming that he maybe just turned into a straight-up alcoholic yes. once the disappearance of his son. But he notices the lunchbox, and he's like, where did you get that? Where did you find that? Tell me who you are. 
and she, Tabitha, obviously realises this must be Victor's father, or at least Victor's brother. I don't think it's confirmed that it's his father. She assumes it's his father, but I'm going to assume that it is his father, or else it wouldn't just make much sense for her to call him Victor's dad. But, I mean, that was pretty much from the outside world. I mean, this is a little bit intriguing, now that she is going to get someone else involved, and I'm assuming now she'll finally tell the truth and open up to somebody about where she's been. Now, will this guy believe her? Will this guy think she's crazy? I mean, we don't really know the, the history of Victor and his father. Was his father in that town? Did his father maybe escape from that town? Or did Victor get taken alone? I mean, I don't think that's really been touched upon. So, I mean, there's definitely some exciting, exciting, you know, aspects of this, and I'm looking forward to see where they take it in episode two, but that pretty much covers the whole Tabitha thing. I mean, I, I guess we're a little disappointed that she didn't reveal anything, or didn't really ask any questions, but again, you know, maybe that's the cliffhanger, maybe they want that to be uh, seasons two, uh, episode two's priority. I mean, maybe, but I mean, I think the first question you've got to ask, like, to your mother is like, well, how long have we been missing? What year is it? What day is it? Because, I mean, th that is all questions you need to know, because you don't know, like, where they've been, has it been normal days? Like, you see on different planets and things like that, that, like, you know, a, a second on a planet is eight years on Earth. I mean, say it was something crazy like that, you, I mean, you don't know what you'd be going back to on Earth. I mean, Obviously, it's not, it's not that bad, but, you, you know, I get it, right? M mysterious and keep all the mystique in there, but we're in season three of the show. I think we can, you know... You can give us a wee bit of rope, you can give us a bit of leeway, you can give us some information. It, you know, it's not incredibly... It's not asking an awful lot for her to ask these things. No, no, I mean, I, I was looking for maybe some Easter eggs, maybe some clippings in the hospital, something that would have the date, a newspaper. I personally didn't see anything. Don't know if you've seen anything. No, I didn't see anything. So, again... I mean, obviously, the questions with Victor's father, th this is good. I'm going to assume he wasn't in the world. Maybe he was. I doubt he was, because when you hear Victor, when remember all the flashbacks with Victor, there was no mention of his father. It was just him and his mother, and his mother got killed, and he hid, and he survived. So, yeah, I mean, that that is intriguing, but, I mean, if we just, let's address the elephant in the room. It doesn't really look like the guy could be his father, but you never know. Maybe the, the location ages people quicker than... Or maybe you're just, you know, being too picky about this and the guys... Maybe I'm being a wee bit too picky. I think you are. I mean, I, I think Victor could pass as about 40, if you're being generous. A really shitty 40. And, and, and I think Victor's father, if you're being harsh on him, could pass into, well, like, someone into his mid-60s. So, I mean, I can definitely see how it is, his father. And maybe he had Victor when he was young. Maybe he did. We'll have to wait and see, but you know what? I, I actually enjoyed the Tabitha stuff. No, I did as well. I was just kind of hoping that we'd get a little bit more answers. I but, think it was the best part of the episode. But, you know, may maybe they're saving that for later. Right, in the town, we have um, Jim. Jim's obviously looking for his wife. His son is out missing. Uh, and honestly, man, I, I, I hate Ethan. Uh, this, uh, I mean, kid actors just really, I can't stand him. I, I don't think he was that bad in season one, but I think he's getting a hell of a lot worse. So, uh, oh, the goat! I gotta get my goat! Yeah, so uh, Tian, Kenny's mom, I'm just gonna call her Kenny's mom, or Chen Lu, Chen Lu, I don't know. Kenny's mom uh, finds Ethan, Jim basically shouts at his kid and he realises, look, this ain't good, my kids are... My kids are looking for their mother. I need to go out and find her. Jim decides he's going to go and look for um, his wife, Tabitha. But we have Boyd saying that's nah, not a good idea. Sorry, Jim. Likelihood is, you know, she's already dead. Jim tells him not to say this. Kenny walks in to try and defuse the situation. Jim says he's going. And then Kenny offers to help Jim. He says he'll go with him. Boyd takes him outside. He's like, what are you doing? You know, it's a suicide. You don't need to do it. And Kenny's like, nah. I do need to do it. I, I don't want to see. I know what it's like to lose a parent. I don't want to see Ethan and his sister lose both of their parents. Okay. Within a week. So, I mean, I think that was a pretty incredible foreshadowing. Yeah. Obviously, so, it's not a week for Kenny, but uh, he's going to lose both of them. Yeah, so uh, Kenny is going to go out with Jim and they get some supplies and uh, Boyd basically tells them about the little hut that he was in with Sarah and he says, all right, use that is your starting point, use the hut basically as your checkpoint, and make sure you're back in the hut before um, night time, because obviously that is when the monsters come, so 
And we get Jim and Kenny. They go out on their way. They find the hut. They don't get to the, the spider webs that Boyd was talking about. But they do get to, not the hut, but they get to like some little shack shack house looking thing that they they hole up for the night and i mean that was pretty much it that was but, i mean jim but, does turn around and say you know what actually i need to go back because my kids need me there's no point me killing myself you know what though i think that's a bit crap to be honest with you. he's been out less than one night and he's bottled it yeah a, cu it, a couple of hours into looking for his wife and he's like fuck this yeah I, it just seemed pathetic didn't it it just seemed like filler at the end of the day I mean, it did, it did seem a little bit like filler. It just seems like an excuse for them to go back for Kenny to find out his mum's deed. That's what it seems like to me. But, I mean, honestly, why would he Why would he be so hell-bent? I mean, it's like, forget about his kids. Do you not want to find your wife? Yeah, I mean, you'd think so. But, I mean, it does kind of make sense, I guess, that perhaps, I mean, she is dead. We see Jade going crazy. He's, he's made, like, a sculpture of the sign that he keeps seeing and... You know what? I think the I mean, of this guy. I, yeah, I think Jade in season one was really good. I think Jade in season two was borderline just like crazy and not really. And it just, I don't know. I think see, I just didn't enjoy him season two, and it looks like season three they've made him be more so. They've uh, ramped him up his crazy levels, so to speak. So uh, we see him. He gets taken to the station. Boyd says he's gonna have to sleep it off because they can't really trust him to be on his own in case he he dies. Because it looks like he is a little bit unhinged at this point. Uh, we did get, I mean, one quick scene with Christy where she said goodbye to Kenny. Didn't see Christy's other half. I'm assuming she's still alive unless they killed her off screen between season two and season three. Yeah. But she wasn't in this episode. Um, Boyd goes up to the, I mean, not the far away house. He goes up to the, what do you call that house where all the, 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 the hippies live? Halfway house? The halfway house. That's the one. Uh, Fatima's got stomach issues. I mean, could there be something wrong with her baby? Uh, no one's ever had a baby, I don't believe, in this town. Yep. In the Fromland. So I mean, it, I mean, I mean, she says she she couldn't have kids, so maybe like you don't know, maybe you have it in six months instead of nine. We just don't really know how yeah. it works. I mean, or could it be a monster or something like that? We don't really know, but uh, we see she's not doing too good. And then we get an issue with the food, and you know what? That this does seem like. It does seem like more filler. I see no reason why this whole food shortage thing couldn't have been included in season two when not much was going on. Because I remember they did this at the beginning of season four of The Walking Dead when like people got sick and there was like you know the food was contaminated, the pigs and they had to get rid of them. It's like you know that kind of almost felt like filler until they got to their, their whole governor arc. And to me. I wouldn't be surprised of the whole food issue. I mean, maybe it won't go on. They've got rotten soil. And it does give them a dilemma. Do they kill the animals to eat the animals? Although Boyd says the animals are a resource and that the animals create food, which they do. But later on, he kind of just changes his mind. And he does stop the... Who's the, who's the arsehole on the bus? I can't necessarily remember his name, but I tell you what, see the halfway house people just, Randall. just breaking into Tia Chen's fucking house and stealing all the food? I thought Boyd handled that like a shite bag. Donna's like, oh, even if we get all of it back, Boyd, you know, it's going to run out eventually. What the fucking sort of logic's that then? Yeah, so... I mean, she, is she going to open every fucking tin and eat it? Randall, looks like she has. Rand, I mean, who that? remember that person in the, fact, the, the house? It was like, um, nah, we, we're all in smaller portions. It's like, I, I fucking think so. Nope, no, you're not. Um, so Randall wants to kill the goat. Boyd's like, you know, here, either you give the goat back or we can do this right here, right now. So it looked like Boyd was looking for a fight and Boyd's son was, you know, there to... We also got a flashback scene with Father Catchy, which I, I like the character, but you know what? I mean, I, I don't really see what this is offering anymore. Uh, unless it's going to be a regular thing. Like, seeing Dexter, when Dexter had, like, imaginations with his father, I didn't mind it, because it was almost felt like that's part of the show. Yes. It didn't feel sure, because it almost felt like his father was a part of the show, because it happened so frequently, but, like, with Father Catry, it's like, it just seems like they want to bring him back for a he's wee... He's dead, he's done, he has no overarching presence on the show, like, no one else gives a shit about him. I thought when they first brought him back, it was good. Yes, but... As a like... one-off, but... It's like, it's, you look at The Walking Dead, and they brought Shane back for Rick's final episode. That was a good touch. Yes. But see if they brought Shane back every, like, six episodes just to have conversations with Rick. I don't think it would have had the same impact. So, I like Father Castry, but, look, I think they killed him way too early. But then again, this show doesn't really kill anyone, so I'm not going to complain. Um, we have the, the bath 
Tub kid, he's still dreaming about monsters, and I just don't care That's for him. Filler, man. Who I, gives a I don't really, I don't really care for anyone in the the halfway house. To be honest, uh, right then, the the kind of determined that they're going to kill the animals. Ethan's upset. He says, "Can you kill my friend first, his little goat friend, because he doesn't want his goat friend to watch his other animal friends die." I don't know if Boyd's having second thoughts, but later that night, the monsters let out the animals and you just see the animals walking down the street and for me this was really dumb all of a sudden you get Boyd you get Jade you get uh, Chen Lu and you also get Victor. Victor they all run out into the street at night time and they, they try to like you know gather up the animals now I, I get it the animals are important but Never up to this point have you felt like there was anything really worth opening the doors for outside. It was almost like a forbidden thing that you yep. just you, you cannot do. But now, like, see in see in the first season, see when they're like inside that um the the RV, like Boyd's pretty much like here. If this talisman falls off, or if if they get in, we're done. Yeah. But now you can see it's almost like, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's a risk on its side, but it's not, you know, it's worth the risk of saving the animals. And I just thought that was weird. And especially because, like, I mean, they were leaving the door open as well to the place where they're going out. It, it just made no sense to me that they value the animals, they value the food source over going outside and possibly dying. For me, it was like, right, just wait till the morning and go out and then try and get the animals back. That's what I would have done. But we see them try and, they try and rescue the animals. Jade and Victor take some into one of the houses. Chen Lu and Boyd take the couple. One of the cows gets killed, unfortunately, throat slashed. <laughs> they then get the other cow back into the barn, but it's an ambush because the monster is in the barn. And they start, they start attacking Boyd, but for some reason they're not killing Boyd. And again, I don't really like this. I think they're trying to torture Boyd. They want, I don't know if they want Boyd to be the last guy standing. But for some reason now, they're not really willing to kill Boyd. They're, they're beating him up. They're, they're throwing... Like, I remember watching this in the trail, and I thought this was, like, people from the actual town maybe trying to turn on yeah, Boyd. Like new people or something? S stealing the food or, or something like that. But it, it's actually the monsters are beating up Boyd. And then they restrain him. And he has to watch as they torture Chen Lu. And I'm assuming they do kill her because we just see one of the monsters, like, start pulling the back of your scalp off, and you see her head kind of just, like, separate from her scalp, and it's not good, and, and Boyd's, like, just telling her, you know, it's okay, it's okay, look at me, and it's look like, my eyes. it's not okay, Boyd, she's fucking dying. Yeah, it was like a saw she, trap, man. She's getting tortured here, so, I mean, that was pretty much it. I think that's the episode. Yeah, I, I, mean, that, I mean, I think that's a pretty decent death, but, I mean, it's going to more affect Kenny than it'll affect us, but then that'll affect us in turn, but, I mean, I, I, thought, I thought the ending was alright, but again, I don't like the there's so much interacting with the monsters. Uh, we also had a scene where Ethan goes outside. Oh, my goat! I need, I need to protect my... How far... Is that not dumb? Is that not just forced? Yeah. See that? That just makes you want the kid uh, to die. Sarah just appeared out of nowhere. That, 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 that makes you just want the kid to fucking die straight away, in my opinion. Yeah. That wee stupid bastard opening the door. The no. monster gets into the house. They have to run outside. Sarah manages to, um, you know, hide with them in the bushes. And I'm assuming they're safe after that, but... See, see if you're a child in this universe, man. You should just get locked in. You, should, you shouldn't be allowed it. You it's shouldn't have any windows. Locked in your bedroom. Aye. Just dumb. The man Absolutely. protects his family. Absolutely dumb. I mean, Ethan could see that there was, there was people out trying to save the animals. Why is he going to... I know. And, 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 and let's just see. Why is Julie not looking after him? It's just... Kids ruin everything in my eyes. Yeah, it's just, I, I was it's just, just it like was a needless scene. It was just so we could get a dumb little chase scene where they have to run outside the house and Sarah can save them. Yeah. See that there was no reason to add. I mean, the guy's been in this town for two seats. He knows how things work. You can almost understand if it was his first night or something. No, I know. Absolute dumbass. Anyway, um, I I'll give it a six out of ten. I, I thought it was as pretty bland as a premiere could have been, but I thought it was all right at points. But I mean, I can't believe that. Like Tabitha feels like the reason this episode was good. I feel. It just, like, everything back in the world of the monsters just felt, it just felt like season two. Why can't you believe that Tabitha was the good part of this episode, considering I think she's actually an okay character, and she's on the outside world, something totally fresh? Because 
Boyd's the man. Boyd's the rock in this show. And I feel well, not, like... Not every Boyd arc's going to be the best. Not every Boyd scene's going to be the best. Yeah, but I feel like Boyd's dropped the ball for a while now. Um, uh, for me, the criticism I've got is... If you take away the Tabitha outside world, it just felt like a continuation of season two. It didn't feel like a premiere. I, I know they've added in the whole, oh, the, the crops are rotten, but that, that just seems like a season two thing to me. Yeah, it does. We're running low on food. Absolutely. Anyway, six out of ten. What are you giving? I'm giving it a six out of ten as well, guys. Let us know your rating down below. We will catch you in the next one. And that is it for From. I'm looking forward to episode two. We will also do a trailer breakdown as well. And I know we're a little bit late, but also death predictions. Why not? We'll have our death predictions. I'm going to assume that Kenny's mum's already dead. I don't think we have any confirmation, but it certainly doesn't look good for her. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Till then, though. Peace.